God. And you can't do it. But you can humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. You can fall down before him and say, Oh, oh Holy One. Oh, Lord God, I know, I know, I know who you are. And I know what I'm not. And I need thee how I need thee. Oh, how we need him. Jesus Christ in Philippians chapter number 2 and verse 8. The Bible said, Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I want you to look at Calvary, and I want you to consider this. That was the end of a life of absolute, complete obedience unto the Father. That's what it took him to. It took him to that tree. It took him to the curse. It took him to the place of death. It took him to the moment of separation. It couldn't get any darker than it got at Calvary. And nobody could give more than he gave at Calvary. It was there that his obedience took him. And he said, I love you, Father. I love you more than anything else. I'm going to be obedient and nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to go to the cross. And I'm going to die upon the tree. And that's exactly what what he did and he died for you and he died for me humility took him there in obedience to the father it took him there it took him to fall before God Almighty at Gethsemane and said Lord not my will but thine be done not mine but thine and the blood came forth from his face and I can't help but believe that Almighty God breathed in the sense of incense he breathed in that sacrifice of his son nothing more could be done now it was settled. He's going to the tree. He's going to die. And he loves me. And he loves them. I've gone as far as I can go. I have manifested my love in a way there's no more that can be done. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, God was in Christ reconciling the world into himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to us the ministry or the word of reconciliation. That's love, friend. He's telling you something today. You've been ditched. You've been shocked. You've been stomped on. You've been turned on. You've had everything happen to you that a human being can do to somebody. But he loves you. 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 The condescension of the Lord Jesus Christ took him down as low as you could go. But the Bible said God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, oh yes, he rewards humility. He rewards humbleness. He rewards a broken and a contrite spirit. Listen to him as he thunders in Isaiah. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Have you got a broken heart? Have you got a broken life? Have you got a broken spirit? Do you have a broken broken attitude? Do you, are you broken? Well, then think of this. It is at that broken place that he revives. The spring of living water gushes up. The manna from heaven is fed to you. It is there you begin to receive from God your arrogance and your proud and your pride, your pride, proud look and all of that puts a barrier between you and the Lord. You may want help. You may mean that you want help. You may tell the Lord I need help, but as long as your pride remains, it's a wall of separation between you and God. The Holy Ghost is so sensitive. He can be grieved so easily. And that pride, that proud look grieves him. God help me, you may say, to come to brokenness. God help me for my heart to be broken. God help me to put down all these walls of protection I've got built around me. I've been hurt before, preacher. I don't want to be hurt again. Yeah, but you can't get close to God with these walls built up around you. They've got to come down. You've got to come and trust Him. You've got to cast yourself before Him. You've got to fall at His feet. You've got to say, Lord God, I've been hurt, but Lord God, I'm going to trust You again. Help me. Pull me up out of this. Give me help, Lord. The Bible said He resisteth the proud, but He does what to the humble? You see, grace is the avenue that it comes by. A broken and contrite spirit opens the door, but he ministers it through grace. You can't earn it. You can't earn it. But grace feeds you. Grace forgives you. Grace restores you. Grace heals you. And through that avenue of grace. Well, how does that work, preacher? It's by knowing that I don't deserve it. 
but I know I can receive from him. Because he breaks you and he breaks you down to where you can receive. Let's go on. Presumption, self-reliance, rebellion, a hard heart, strife, faithlessness, self-will, all lead to damnation. You see, pride is the opposite of humility. The opposite of presumption is confidence. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I know thou hearest me always. Where did he say that? You ought to know. Where did he say that I know thou hearest me always, but for these that stand by, for those standing here, outside where? A tomb. Lazarus. That's right. He said, I know. What is that? That's confidence. Hebrews talks about confidence, that we can come boldly with confidence to the throne of grace. Have you been there? No, no, no. Most people don't go. Most people pray only when they sense a need, when they feel a need. And your greatest need to pray is when you don't feel a need. That's when you need to pray more than any other time. Get back in your closet and start talking to Him. Listen, a life that is lived with an intellectual faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, coming from your head and not your heart, is practical atheism. You're essentially no different from any man out here in this world. Oh, I believe in the man upstairs or supreme being or, oh, Jesus is the Son of God and the Bible is the Word of God. But it doesn't affect your life. It doesn't change anything about the way you live. You still live just like the world does. You feed your flesh, fornicate, drink, get into your dope, blaspheme. Your life hasn't changed. You say, well, I may be a little backslidden, a little backslidden. What are you talking about? There is no place for backsliding for the Christian. You're either walking in the Spirit, Romans chapter number 8, or you're going to be under the chastening hand of God. One or the other. There's no medium ground there. What's this talk about I'm back swell, I've been a little cold on the Lord for five or ten years. Been, what are you talking about? You either live and walk in the Spirit, Romans chapter and right there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. There's power in the Spirit. There's joy in the Spirit. There's love in the Spirit. There's peace in the Spirit. The strife is gone. There's glory in your soul. You can walk with Him. You can talk with Him. You can feast with Him. You can sit at His table and He'll sit down with you. All that can be done in the Spirit, but you can't do it in the flesh. But He said, if you don't do that, if you live after the flesh, you'll what? Die. So how, and how do I do this, preacher? Yield to Him. His hand's on you right now. He'll put his big, wonderful hand upon your soul and say, I love you, son, or I love your daughter, and I want to deal with you as a father deals with his child. That's what he wants. And if you'll do that, then he'll deal with you as with a son and purge this garbage from your life. You can't do it. You can no more do that than you can save yourself. But you can yield, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, the Bible says. Yield to him. Now listen carefully. There is seated at the right hand of the Father at this moment a great high priest after the order of Melchizedek, right? Yes, thank you, Jesus. The Bible said he offered one sacrifice for sins forever and sat down at the right hand of God. One time, one sacrifice for sin forever. Do you realize that during his earthly life he worked out and paid for and accomplished and produced a holiness and righteousness that did not exist until he did it. And everything he did now can be applied to you for your benefit if you'll simply humble yourself before his hand. There's not a one of us in this house that doesn't need to get closer to God. Not a one of us. There's not a one of us in this house that, doesn't des that, that shouldn't desire to have more and more and more of him and less and less of us. Right? I want you to do it. Why don't you get up and come down here this morning and say, Oh God, I'm hungry, Lord. I don't want any more of me. I want more of you. It's not about me. It's about you. In the name of Jesus. Bless his name. Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. This service is in your hands now, Lord. Anything that's done is your Lord. It's your work. It's yours. 
thank you for the opportunity to stand. Thank you, Lord. You raised me up, Lord. You raised me up. I give you my life again this morning. It's in thy hands. Blessed Jesus. Blessed, 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 blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Savior. In thy holy name now, Lord. In thy holy name. Savior. Blessed Jesus. Blessed, blessed Jesus. And realize, God, who we are, how good we are, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Blessed, blessed Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. God, yes, God, amen. God, his faith to come. Lord, just coming forth and realize. Well, preacher, God, I don't know. I don't know if God cares. Any. Listen. The Bible said, by the grace of God, he should taste death for every man. That's what it says in Hebrews. That's me, that's you, everybody. Red man, yellow man, black man, white man, rich man, poor man, bond man, free man. Make a difference to the Lord. Christ's blood covers the sin. John the Baptist said, take away the sin of the world. Amen. Everybody. Everybody. I want no part of any idea where God excludes certain people and only saves and redeems a few. Not so. The Bible said he was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Even to those who crucified him, the Lord Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. What a thing. Isn't that something? To the very ones who nailed him to the tree, he said, Father, forgive them. Hallelujah. So what's all that for? It's for a guarantee that if you come unto him, he won't turn you away. That's what it's for. It has power in it, Lord, to save the same blood. God that cleanses and stretches will love you for it. We'll praise your sweet name for Do you realize that every sin that a human being can commit, every sin, is connected to the same root cause? Understand that? It's born in the same place. It doesn't make a difference if it's murder, if it's theft, if it's a liar, if it's a profligate. They, it all comes from the same place. What is that? It comes from Adam's original sin, and the only thing that can do anything about Adam's original sin is belief in Christ. You inherited an awful lot of stuff when you were born. But the Bible said in Revelation chapter number 1, Who hath washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Did God save anybody in here this morning? He may save you later. We've had a request to have an altar prayer this morning. And uh, for uh, Sheila, we want to pray for her. If you'd like to come down here and meet with us now. Good time to have an altar prayer is after we've had an altar call. Amen.